Come quick, come quick! Or you'll miss it! We don't want to miss this! Oh, she's a beaut! Behold the Icebug DTS-3 running shoe in its natural environment. Notice its bright blue colors which attracts mates and its sharp carbide tips that stays off its most ferocious predator, snow and ice. Let's gently pick up this beauty and go talk about it. Good morning, family of fast. Matt Mossman, the endurance guru over at Endurelite, coming at you with our part two review of the Icebug DTS-3 Bug Grip running shoe. Now, if you missed our first video, we kind of talked about more of the technical features of the Icebug DTS-3 running shoe, such as the uh, water-resistant upper, the wider last, uh, the fully cushioned sole, and of course, uh, the carbide spikes and grippy sole on the bottom. Now, part two of this review is really where the uh, rubber meets the road in terms of uh, I went out, I tested them, and I think I gave them a fair test. So I'm here back to report to you how the shoes performed in the nasty winters in South Dakota. But before I get to that, I'm gonna show you a little clip of some of the conditions I tested the Icebug DTS-3 Bug Grip running shoe in. All right, Endurelite family fast. Here is the uh, first test of the uh, Icebug shoes today. Now, right away, I noticed, like if I were running and my regular shoes are yak tracks, I would already be slipping all over my ass, but Besides all the divots here, the shoes actually feel really uh, stable, really grippy, <laughs> which I really like because I appreciate not falling on my ass. From the uh, recent melt and snow, you can't see it, but there <laughs> is a sheet of ice underneath the snow. And so far, no slipping, very sure-footed. Nice job, Ice Bug. So, we're entering the tunnel that I was talking about before that has a pure sheet of ice. Let's take a look at it here real quick. <laughs> so you can see how icy that is. That is super icy. So we're gonna go uh, regular stride, not be too timid and see how these uh, Ice Bug DTS-3 do on this. Here we go. I'm kind of scared right now, but very excited how well these are doing. Holy traction. So as you can see I, from that video, I tested these things in snow and ice on pure sheets of ice. And again, everything else in between. Basically the worst that the South Dakota winners could throw at that shoe or at the, at the shoe, I put it to the test. Now, what we're gonna discuss today in this video are a few different things. We're gonna tell you about the uh, fit of the shoe, the feel of the shoe, and most importantly, how the shoe performed. And then we'll kind of end with the uh, pros and cons and who this shoe is really gonna work uh, best for. Now, in terms of the fit, uh, right off the bat, the shoe fit really well. And I think that's attributed to my wide, uh, my wide foot. And so this shoe has a wider last. So it slipped in real nice. It wasn't really tight anywhere at all. And overall, it just fit really comfortable to begin with. Um, I did notice when I first put it on there was kind of a weird crease as I got up on the toe, um, from heel to toe. And I was curious if that was gonna bug me while I was running. So the kind of the next thing we'll go to is, is the feel of the shoe. Um, when I took out the shoe to run in it for the first time, I was pleasantly surprised that it felt good right off the bat and that crease in the toe really didn't bug me at all. And look, it's pretty rare that I can put on a running shoe and determine if I like it right away. It usually takes me a good probably, I don't know, one to two weeks to see if I really like the shoe. But the ice bug felt really good off the bat. There was no weird slipping. There was no hot spots or rubbing. Um, the shoe felt extremely responsive in terms of like energy return. It almost felt springy. So I think on the first run, I took it out for an hour and a half and I had zero issues, which like I said before, that's really rare uh, for that to happen when I'm trying a new running shoe. So fit and feel, absolutely amazing. Nice job, Icebug. Now to what we really wanna know, 
How did this shoe perform on the ice and the snow and the, just the nasty ass winters in South Dakota? Uh, truth be told, when I first put it on for the first test, I was afraid and I was a little timid going over ice. If you remember that Bambi movie on Bambi on ice slipping all over, that was what I kind of envisioned happened. But after about a good five minutes of going over like pure ice and just a bunch of junk, I got the confidence to really like keep regular stride on icy and snowy surfaces. And I kid you not, I did not slip once. And that is beyond exciting for me because I've tried everything underneath the sun to prevent myself from slipping on my ass, from yak tracks to screw shoes to micro spikes and everything else in between. And nothing ever seemed to really work. So I'm very, very happy to say in the Icebug DTS3 running shoe that I never slipped once. And more importantly, I had the confidence on my runs to just keep my regular stride, to go on nasty conditions and avoid the treadmill and not having to worry about slipping and falling. So performance wise is out of this world. Like you will not slip in this shoe. I mean, it, I went over pure sheets of ice, you saw it in that video, didn't slip once. I've sprinted over pure sheets of ice, didn't slip once. So very high marks on this shoe. So let's go over the, uh, the pros and cons of this particular shoe. Um, pros again, uh, water resistant upper, uh, works perfectly for the winter time so your foot doesn't get uh, wet. Very responsive, I like the wider last. And what I like the most of all is obviously the bug grip technology here on the bottom. These carbide tips are absolutely amazing and getting you a ton of traction. Uh, so pros there. Um, one question I did get uh, when I was testing these is, Matt, how did the carbide tips uh, perform on the cement? Did you slip all around? And the answer is no. A lot of times I would run to the icy surfaces or trails where I was testing this out and it would be dry cement. And it's not slippery when you are on that dry hard cement. And that's because the uh, carbide spikes kind of react to the surface you're running on depending on how hard it is really dictates how far these carbide spikes sink into the sole. So you don't have to worry about going from pavement to trail and back and forth and uh, slipping all about on that. So that's the pros of the shoe. Now the cons of the shoe, I, I really am reaching for things here because there's so much I like about the shoe. Um, and I'm going to tell you two things that you may not like about the shoe. Um, and we're going to talk around these a little bit too. If you have a narrower foot, uh, the DTS3 running shoe might not be the best fit for you. It may be a little bit too wide and you might want to look at some other ice bug shoes, which their website has a ton of great information about the fit of each shoe and kind of the, the foot it's uh, best meant for. Now, the only other con that I can really think of, and again, this is just being nitpicky, is the price of the shoe. Now, this shoe is $180, and you may be going like, what, $180? But let me tell you this, if you live in an icy, snowy place and nothing else is working for you, the $180 is well spent, so you're not gonna slip around, um, you're not gonna hurt yourself. And if you think about it, I don't think you're gonna need these shoes every day uh, during the winter. Of course, you know, you might get snowstorms and ice at certain times of the year and you might break them out. But I can see this shoe, you know, lasting at least, a, you know, three or four winter seasons. So you kinda gotta factor that in with the, uh, with the cost of the shoe. So $180, again, a little bit of a downside, but in my opinion, it's, uh, it's totally, totally, worth it. Additionally, I mean, you could use these shoes for like wet and slippery surfaces during the spring. Um, hell, I even used them when I was snow blowing my driveway in the wintertime when it was really icy and it did really, really good. So that's the pros and cons of the shoes. Now, who is this shoe best meant for? I can see, you know, a few different circumstances where this shoe would work really well. Obviously in the icy, snowy winters. Um, if you're trail running, I can see this shoe working out really, really good. And in fact, I'm gonna test it on the trails this summer and, and see how it goes. And then if you're an obstacle course racer, and I don't know if they allow these on racing anymore, but for training, this would be an excellent fit. You know, if you're going from wet and muddy and slippery surfaces to 
to climbing up stuff um, and everything in between. So those are the three situations where I could really see the Icebug DTS3 bug grip running shoe um, working well. So let's wrap this all up. Again, a huge thank you to Icebug USA for sending me these shoes to test. Um, as always, I'm going to give you my honest opinion on the gear and I hope I gave you a, an accurate and fair review on this shoe in regards to what I liked and what I didn't like. Um, so definitely check out uh, the Icebug website and all their selection of shoes. They have uh, more padded, cushioned running shoes. They have lightweight trainers. They have more trail shoes. They have boots. Uh, they have a whole bunch of different shoes for different applications with and without spikes. So I highly encourage you to check them out. So I appreciate you guys stay in tune for part two of this review. And until next time, Endure Elite Family of Fast, stay fueled, stay focused, and stay fast.